Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. What does God say? He is our hope in distress. He is our light in darkness. Do not fear for God is with you. God is your strength. God is your help. God will lift you up. If God is for you, no one can be against you. Welcome to week three of our series we are calling Feel the Fear. And today we are looking at a very serious fear, and that is the fear of the future. But before I dive into that, I always like to start off my message by taking a moment, looking into the camera, saying welcome to those of you who are joining us online. Wherever you are, we're glad uh, you could join us this morning. Vineyard, would you put your hands together to welcome those who are joining us online? And we're glad you're here. Well, I want to start off with a story. About 10 years ago, uh, I went on a trip with my family, and we went to see Niagara Falls. And we were on the Canadian side, and we were walking around that city. We spent a few days there, and we were walking around the city of Ontario, and we were looking at different things. And one of the things we went into was a haunted house. It was a scary house. We kind of just walked in. It looked crazy. Uh, and, we, and their claim to fame, what they said they were different for, was the fact that their walkthrough was entirely pitch black. You couldn't see anything the entire time. Well, at this time, we had three rambunctious teenage boys, I being one of them, and testosterone was high, and we were kind of picking on each other. We were saying things like, yeah, that doesn't look scary to me. Are, you're scared, though? Oh, okay. Well, I'll go through for you, but I would be bored if I went through, but I'm not scared. And we were kind of picking on each other, saying things like that. And my mom, of course, called all of our bluffs and said, why don't all of you go through? And we looked at her, and we said... No problem. <laughs> so we ended up going, me, my brothers, and my dad, we went in. And the first room in the exhibit was just us. There was actually, it was dark, but there was a little light. And there was a table in the corner. And there was a cloth draped over the table. And then something like appeared under the cloth. And we're like, what is that? And we kind of started walking towards it. And we're like, what? That looks, is that a body? A wall came crashing down between us and the table. And it went completely dark. You couldn't see anything. You couldn't see your hand in front of your face. Dad? <laughs> I was like, where's my dad? Where are my brothers? And we ended up finding each other in the dark, and we were huddling up, and we were whispering to each other, what do we do? I don't know. I don't know where to go. They didn't tell us what to do. And then another whisper from a voice I didn't recognize. Just as close, though. Follow the lights. I was shaking. And then I heard my brother say, look, there's a little red dot. And there was a little red dot, a little red light. So we started shuffling towards it. And, as, and we got to it, and the light disappeared. And then we heard laughing. <laughs> I was shaking it. Now, now I'm sweating. I'm freaking out. I hear, I hear my brother say, there's, there's another light. So we start to walk towards that one. And when we get to that one, we hear breathing. <sighs> and then the light disappears, and the breathing stops. But then there's no more lights. I'm like, where do we go? And then all of a sudden we hear, Woof! headlights cut on. A car comes flying at us. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> they took a photo, obviously. It, you can notice we're missing. I have two brothers. One's missing. <laughs> he was wise and he escaped. He found a door and he got out earlier. But we didn't even know that. <laughs> Of course, the baby gets forgotten. That's what he would say. Well, that went on for about 10 minutes, but it felt like an eternity. You know, Jeremiah is saying, hey, there's a little light. There's a light. And looking back, the scariest part of it wasn't the jump outs or the creepy things we saw. It was that little light. It was having to move forward, kind of not knowing what's in front of me. I was scared of what was to come. It was very scary. 
so why, why do people fear the future? Why are we afraid of the future? I think a big reason is because it's, it's that unknown. It's that dark. We, don't, we, we know it's that direction, but we don't know what we're kind of walking into. You know, even the best forecasts are still educated guesses. Mankind can transplant livers, can program computers, send people to the moon. You could have a PhD, high IQ, but your forecast is still an educated guess. We don't know for certain what's going to happen. Another thing is that the future is uncontrollable. We try to control it with our worries and fears, but that doesn't work out either. You know, Chapman University did a study in 2015 and found that personal fear of the future is in the top five domains of Americans' top fears. So people, it's serious. People do have a fear of the future. Well, what does the Bible say about the future? Well, I think it says three things, and I want to give you those three things. This is your first blank on your outline, is that God knows everything that's going to happen. That's your first one. And that's good news. God knows everything that's going to happen. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13 says, Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him. This is saying God sees everything. And God is not limited by time. God can not only see the present, but he can see the past as well as the future because he's in the past and the future. That's what it means to be omniscient. Let me, for example, let me help you understand that. If you and I were to jump into a blimp and go over the Neptune Festival that's happening today, what, what would we see? We would see the art show. We would see people eating turkey legs. We'd see all the food vendors. We'd see the sandcastle competition. We'd see everything, right? Well, not so for the person down on the ground. They would only see what's right in front of them, what's directly there, what's presently in front of them. Likewise with God, that's his perspective. He has a very different perspective on time than we do. So he sees everything. He knows everything. He knows your future. He sees your future and he knows your future. And so it's safe to say that God's not surprised when, when things happen. Things don't catch him off guard. Things we do don't catch him off. Ooh, I didn't see that coming. That's not how God is. God knows everything. And that's good news because the second thing the Bible says about your future is that God has a plan for my future. God has a plan for your future. He has a plan. Jeremiah chapter 29 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Why don't you go ahead and underline plans, prosper, hope, and future. And that's important. Why? Because it shows God has been thinking about your future for some time. He's probably been thinking about it more than you have. In fact, he has. He's put together a plan specifically for you, for your future. And it's not plans to, plans to harm you, but it's plans to bless you, to prosper you. That's what he has in mind. And it's important to say it's, you can miss that plan. People ask, oh, well, I'll get to it. No, you can miss that plan. It has an expiration date. That's you. <laughs> When you expire, the plan's gone because the plan is built around you. Do you see what I'm saying? The plan's built specifically for you, and you can miss it. And it's sad. The sad truth is a lot of people do miss God's plan for their life. Millions and millions of people go through life either not knowing about their plan or knowing about it and not stepping into it. It's so important. You can miss it. And there's an expiration tag. You don't want to miss it. Tomorrow's never guaranteed. You know, one time I took a flight with my brother and we were flying into Vegas. We were catching a connecting flight out. And when we were getting ready to land, if you've flown before, you know that moment right before you land, there's kind of like a lull. You know, you haven't quite touched the ground yet, but you're about to. Well, that's what was happening. We were about to touch the ground. And then all of a sudden, the pilot punches it out of nowhere, gives it full throttle. My brother and I we sit back in the seat. Our eyes are bulging. A lot of G-force was on my body. I've never felt anything like that on a jet plane before. It was crazy. He was just throttling. And then he started to bank at the same time. You could, we could see out the window. You could see the ground, and it was way too close. People were screaming. We thought we were going to die. I've flown a lot, and I've never had anything like that happen. It was terrifying. Well, we leveled off a couple seconds later, and the pilot, you could tell the restraint in his voice, he said um, that when he, he was coming into land, there had been miscommunication with the tower. And apparently a smaller plane was getting ready to take off at the same time we were landing. And who knows what would have happened if, that had, if, if he hadn't done that quick maneuver. I probably wouldn't be standing here. I'm thankful to God for that. But it's, you ne tomorrow's never guaranteed. It never is. 
That's why you need to step into God's plan today. He has a plan for it, and it calls for you to be mobilized today. You know, that's why we talk about growth track so much. You hear growth track every week, and why do they keep talking about it? Well, it's because we're doing all we can as a church to tell people God has a plan for your life. He's uniquely designed you to do something. He's given you a purpose, and we want to help you discover that purpose. You know, next weekend is step one of growth track. Pastor Andy and Sharon, our senior pastors, are teaching it. You get lunch. Put it in your calendar. Don't wait till tomorrow. Put it on your calendar today. Make plans to be here. It's important because God has a purpose on your life, okay? Well, the third thing about your future you need to know is that God will be with me every step of the way. God will be with me every step of the way. We don't necessarily know what's going to happen tomorrow or in 10 years, but Scripture says it's God's promise that he will be with us every step of the way. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says, God has said, never will I leave you and never will I forsake you his promise. I will always be with you no matter what comes, no matter what storms may come. I will be with you every step of the way. Every step of the way. That's talking about God's faithfulness is what that's talking about. Look at this verse. Psalm Psalm 34 says, I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. I want you to underline all my fears. It's not just one, it's all of your fears. You know, there's something interesting in Scripture you see that for every fear we have, for every fear you possess, there's a corresponding attribute or aspect of God we see in Scripture, something about his character, his personality, his nature. It corresponds to every single fear you have. So ultimately, our fears are birthed out of either a lack of understanding or a lack of trust in God and who he is. Let me say that again. Our fears come from a place where we either don't understand or we don't trust certain aspects of God. That's big. So how do you get past that? Well, you seek the Lord. You seek to understand who he is. Because when you really understand who God is, there's nothing to be afraid of. It changes everything. So what is the corresponding attribute of the fear of the future, which we're talking about today? Well, we see in Scripture time and time again that that is God's faithfulness is what that is. It's God's faithfulness. What is God's faithfulness? Well, that means he can't lie. If he makes you a promise, he's keeping it. It's a part of his nature. He can't, he just can't be unfaithful. Let's look at this scripture. It says on 2 Timothy, it's on the other side of your outline, chapter 2. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. Why? Because he cannot disown himself. So if somebody were to ever ask you, is there something God can't do? You can say, yeah, he can't be unfaithful. If he makes a promise to me, he's keeping it. That's his word. He not only stands in truth, he is truth. It's his nature. He keeps his word. He is faithful. We see in Psalm 145, verse 13, that the Lord is faithful to what? To his promises. To his promises. What, you might be saying, well, Pastor Samuel, what does it have to do with me? Why, what does it have to do with my fear of the future? Well, you need to know that there are over 7,000 instances in the Bible where we see promises. God making promises. They're like blank checks ready to be cashed. 7,000 promises to you. It's huge. And I want to look at three of those promises, which I believe God is saying, hey, if you grab hold of these promises, if you trust in these promises I'm giving you, you have nothing to fear in your future. Okay? Well, the first promise we see is that I can depend on God to assist me when I'm tempted. I can depend on God to assist me when I'm tempted. You know, a story, somebody shared a story with me the other day, and it was about uh, four priests who decided to go on vacation together. And uh, they were out in a cabin, and they were co- talking to each other. They were just doing life together. And one of the nights they were together, they, sa- they decided they wanted to share some struggles and some temptations they had with each other. That way they could grow past them. Well, the first priest said, yeah, you guys, you know, I just I really struggle with uh, bad pictures. That's my temptation. You know, just the other week I actually picked up a copy of the Sports Illustrated Swimsuit Edition. Well, the second priest said, well, I've, I've got you beat. My temptation is worse. I struggle uh, with gambling. You know, I was supposed to do a homily, but instead I went and bet on the ponies. It's bad. Uh, mine's worse, said the third priest. He said, no, mine is worse. I, I struggle with the urge to drink. That's where I'm tempted. And in fact, I dipped into the sacramental wine just the other day. Well, the fourth priest was quiet. He's sitting there. And he said, well, I hate to say this, brothers, uh, but my temptation is worst of all. I love to gossip. 
and I have to go make some phone calls. <laughs> Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> hey, if one thing's for sure is that you're going to be tempted in your future. Why? Because that, that's how Satan loves to attack you. He loves to tempt you. Why? Because he likes to keep you locked on the past. He loves to bring up old temptations, old things that you think you, you, you have victory over. And he likes to drudge them back up all throughout your life. He loves to do that. Stuff from a long time ago. He'll bring it back up because he loves to. His, his goal is to incapacitate you, to immobilize you, keep you right where you're at. How? Because he wants you feel f- fearful of your future by keeping you looking at your past. Where God says, no, I want you to step into the future I have for you. Be mobilized into the plan I have for you. See, and it can be dangerous because we get into this place where we're fearful of the future because we're afraid we're just walking on a tightrope and we're going to fall. But God says, hey, I'm going to catch you. I got you. We see that in Scripture. He says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, no temptation is irresistible. You can trust God to keep the temptation from becoming so strong that you can't stand up against it. For he has what? Promised. He's promised this and will do what he says. He will show you how to escape. You know, this says is, to me, it says God's in my corner. God's pulling for me. God, every time I have a temptation, every single time, there's an escape route. There's never a temptation that I can't overcome because I know God's in my corner. I know God's in my corner. And this is important to hear, especially if you're a new Christian or if you're growing in your faith, that temptation in itself is not a sin. You might be going through life and that thought pops in your head like, whoa, where did that come from? That's not a sin. Acting on that temptation is a sin. But the temptation itself isn't. We see that uh, the Bible says Jesus was tempted in every way we were, yet he sinned not. So you need to hear that. So next time the devil kind of whispers that sweet nothing in your ear, say, hey, take a hike. Get out of here. I have a powerful God on my side, and he's created an escape route for me. He's got my best interest in mind. Amen? Well, the second promise God has for your future is that I can depend on God to support me when I'm overwhelmed. I can depend on God to support me when I'm overwhelmed. How many of you ever feel overwhelmed by how fast things are changing in the world? I know I do. And and I thought I was young. I I just got a phone. It feels like last week. It was about a year ago. So daggone expensive. It feels like it was last week. And I showed a, a youth it the other day. I was like, yeah, look at my phone. I'm like you. He said, no, that's an old phone. (laughs) So I just bought this. (laughs) It's not only technology, though. Things are just changing so fast. Things we take for granted today didn't even exist 10 years ago. So the same true in our personal lives. When we look at our personal lives and what we're doing today, we can't even foresee the problems we're going to have in the next hour, let alone the next year. With With the church our size, the law of averages says that some of you in here next year might have cancer. Some of you next year might lose a loved one between now and next year. You might get in a major car accident. Your kids might start acting crazy. You might lose your job. What do you do do when that stuff happens? Do you just panic and, it's too much, I can't handle it. I'm gonna lock the door and just stay inside. No, the Bible says, the Bible says you cling to God's faithfulness. You cling to God's promise that he will support you because that's his promise to us. We see in Isaiah chapter 43, it says, when you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. Why? For I am the Lord, your God. What God is saying is he will never give you more than you can handle. He never will. You know, there's 365 Fear nots in the Bible. That's one for each day. <laughs> but God said, hello, get the message. You don't have to be afraid when you walk with me. I've got you. I've got you. And here's the cool thing from God's perspective about the future is you don't have to deal with the whole future tomorrow. No, you just take it one day at a time. The future comes in nice, tight, little 24-hour air compartments. You just take it one day at a time. That's what Jesus said. The Bible says, Jesus said, don't worry about tomorrow because each day has its own troubles. See, Jesus is saying, plug into each day and then plug into me because I will give you the strength to take on each day. 
That's his promise. I will support you when it feels overwhelming. You can rely on me. Now, the third one is one of my personal favorite ones, and this is because you see it time and time. This prom- it's not just a promise, but you see it time and time again manifest itself throughout Scripture and all the different stories. And uh, it's when God, he doesn't just call on the extraordinary people. No, he actually looks for the ordinary people who have fears, who have worries, who have doubts, and he calls on them. He doesn't call on them because they're mighty, but because they're willing to serve and trust a mighty God. See that time and time again throughout the Bible, and I love it. That's what the Bible calls faith. Faith, does, faith is not not being afraid. That's not what faith is. No, faith is choosing to do the right thing, even though you have those fears and doubts, and choosing to trust in a faithful God. So the third promise is that I can depend on God to reward me when I'm faithful to him. I can depend on God to reward me when I'm faithful to him. And let's be honest, when you do something good or do something God-honoring or do something right, nobody really sees it. And if they do, they don't care. (laughs) It's because most of the world just doesn't have those moral standards. They're not trying to live up to the standard God has set. They don't have ethics. You know, if you run a business, you're looking around. All these other businesses, they're, they're doing dishonest things, and that's how they're getting ahead. If I don't, you don't get it, Pastor Jim. If I don't do that, it's a doggy dog world. If I don't do that, I won't keep up with them. You know, I've had mothers come say to me, oh, I serve my kids like crazy and my spouse, and they don't seem to recognize it. They don't seem to care. And what if I, I try to be conscientious at work? I try to do, be productive, but my boss doesn't care. She'll bite my head off if I do anything, if I step out of line. Well, I'm telling you, God cares. God sees, and the Bible says God will not forget, and he remembers, and he will reward that. He will bless that. We see that in scriptures. In Hebrews chapter 6, it says, God is not unfair. He will not forget all that you have done, nor the loving labor which you have shown for his sake. That's his promise. Whenever you give somebody your parking spot, Whenever you let somebody cut in front of you, even though you've been in line forever, if you, when you serve on the dream team in a weekend service, whenever you put other people before yourselves, God says, I see that. I see that. And I will reward that. I will bless that. See, when you start taking care of the needs of others, God will take care of your needs. That's his promise. It's his promise. It's the faithfulness of God. That's why we trust in that. So, I can depend on God to assist me when I'm tempted. I can depend on God to support me when I'm overwhelmed. And I can depend on God to reward me when I'm faithful. And all of that's in relationship to your future. So in light of that, what are you afraid of? What in the world in the future is there to be afraid of? Well, it really comes down to this. Do you trust God or not? Do you really trust God? Do I really trust God? If you've never made that decision. I'm going to give you the opportunity to do that in just a minute. But it's so important to understand that if you really trust God, if you really believe he will do what he says he will do, there's nothing to be afraid of. But if you don't, on the other hand, if you don't believe he'll do what he says he will do, then there's everything to be afraid of. It boils down to this, my fears in me or my faith in God. That's what it really comes down to. Am I willing to trust God? Am I willing to build my life around his biblical promises for my future. It says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses me with inner strength into me. That verse doesn't say you won't be afraid. It doesn't say you won't experience doubts or concerns. It doesn't say anything about feelings. But it does say Christ will give you the strength. He will infuse you with the strength you need. And all you have to do is ask. You just have to say, Jesus, give me the strength to take on today. (laughs) That's my morning prayer. Good morning, Jesus. Give me the strength to get up. (laughs) It's as simple as that, though. God, make me strong where I'm weak. Because you know your weaknesses. God, make me strong where I'm weak. God, I depend on you and not on me. I trade my fears for your faithfulness. Why don't you start that today? Start to build on his promises today. Take that action step of choosing to trust in him. 
Start taking it day by day, asking him for the strength to take on each day. Have the courage to do the right thing when God kind of nudges you. You'll know when it is. He'll nudge you. Do this and do it. Respond to God. Start trusting in his mightiness and his powerfulness and his promises. Would you bow your heads with me? I invite God's presence even more. Come Holy Spirit. I just want the Holy Spirit to minister to you for a minute. Like I said, that nudge, that pressure. Let his love just wash over you. We fear the future because it's unknown and uncontrollable. But we see in scripture that God says, he, he knows your future. He knows everything. Not only that, he has a plan for your future, for you. He's designed something unique that ties into your purpose in life. It's why you were made. You need to hear that, that God has a plan for you, for your life. Not a mistake. For some of you, you've let the fears kind of get in the way of that calling. Some of you can't even look at the future because you're so, so overwhelmed by today. I, mean, I can't even make it through today. I keep... The same things keep tripping me up. The same things I keep stumbling on. Well, you need to hear this, that Jesus loves you right where you're at. Doesn't matter what you're doing, what you have done, or even what you will do. God loves you right here, right now. You need to stop living through your insecurities. Stop looking at yourself. Stop measuring yourself how you see you. Measure yourself how God sees you. Remember, he's not looking for mighty people. He's looking for people who are willing to trust in a mighty God. God has so many promises for your life. We saw that today. But each one of those promises, if you noticed, begins with the I can depend. Because that's his ultimate goal is for you to depend on him, for you to trust him. And that's an action step. That's a choice, choosing to trust Jesus with your life. For some of you, you've never made that decision. I'm, I, wanna, I wanna pray a prayer with you. And don't worry, I'm not gonna make you jump up and down and run down front. I wanna pray with you right there in your seat. So with every head bowed and every eye closed. My favorite part of my personal story with Jesus is I remember that first action step of trust I took and it was the easiest step of the entire journey I've walked with Christ so easy a child could do it I love to describe my relationship with Jesus in one word and that's surrender because God already loved me Jesus already loved me right where I was I just had to love him back and surrender my life back to him, surrender my fears, my pains, my doubts, my future, my life over to him. And I surrendered it all. The Bible says, if you openly declare that he is Lord, that God is the Lord of your life, you will be saved. For some of you, you are Christians, and, but you know you've taken the wheel back. You know you're in control of your life. I invite you to pray with me as well. Surrender it back to God. Every head bowed and every eye closed. If you're saying, Pastor Samuel, that, that's me. I, I, I just need to start depending on God. That's it. I clicked today. I need to start depending on God. I need God. I want to do what you said. Surrender my fears, my pain, just my life back over to him. I want to be included in that prayer. 
If that's you, if you want to be included in that prayer, would you raise your hand right now? Openly declare, I see that. Praise God, praise God. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Praise God. No, praise God. I see that. Make a move towards God. Because when you do, your faith will move also. Well, I want to pray with you now, right there where you are. Just repeat, I'll help you with the words. Repeat after me. You, you just mean it. Would you say, Jesus, I love you, I need you, and I want you. I surrender my life to you. Say it this way. Jesus, be the Lord of my life. Be the Lord of my life. Forgive me. I repent. I was going this way, but now I'm going in a direction that brings me closer to you. Now say this. Jesus, I believe you died, you were buried, and rose again. You are my God, my Savior, and my friend. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.